Hello friends, welcome to the session on oscillators. In this session, we'll be discussing about Wenbridge oscillator. In this session, we will see what we mean by Wenbridge oscillator. We will go for the circuit diagram of Wenbridge oscillator, and we will also analyze the Wenbridge oscillator circuit in order to obtain expression for frequency of oscillations and condition for oscillations. Friends, as you know that you are viewing this session on my YouTube channel learn with prakash kanade and do subscribe to the channel to see many videos on the subjects of electronics and computer science so let us start the session with the question what we mean by wenbridge oscillator wenbridge oscillator is an electronic circuit in which the frequency of oscillations is determined by the feedback circuit and in wenbridge oscillator the feedback circuit used consist of resistors and capacitors and therefore the resistors and capacitors that are used in the feedback circuit will decide the frequency of oscillations in the Wenbridge oscillator. This oscillator will make the use of a bridge circuit which consists of a resistance and capacitor and this circuit is being also called as the lead lag network. So as shown in this diagram the lead lag network will consist of one series RC combination and one parallel RC combination. The input voltage is applied to the series combination and the output is taken across the parallel combination. When bridge oscillator require one non-inverting amplifier and a lead lag network. So it is possible that we can construct the wind bridge oscillator either by using a two stage transistor amplifier or by using operational amplifier. The bridge circuit that is being used in the Wenbridge oscillator was originally invented by the scientist Max Wen and that is the reason this oscillator is being called as a Wenbridge oscillator. Wenbridge oscillator consists of a RC network and therefore this oscillator is being classified as a low frequency oscillator but still it is possible to generate a wide range of frequencies by making the use of Wenbridge oscillator. This oscillator can be used as an audio frequency oscillator and it can generate the frequencies in the range of 20 to 10 kilohertz. This oscillator, as I told you, it can be easily constructed by using either a two stage transistor amplifier or by using a operational amplifier. High frequency oscillations normally cannot be generated by making the use of this oscillator. So this is a low frequency oscillator and therefore it is being used for the generation of low frequencies only. This oscillator is widely used in many applications. Say for example, it can be used in musical instruments, in voice synthesis and it can be used in GPS systems. The output of this oscillator will have a sine wave oscillations at the output. That is, this oscillator will generate the sinusoidal oscillation. Now let us go for the circuit diagram of the Wenbridge oscillator. Now here we are considering the transistor version of the Wenbridge oscillator. And therefore here what we have done is that we have shown the two stage CE amplifier. So this is the first stage of CE amplifier. This is the another stage of CE amplifier. The output of the amplifier is coupled to the feedback network and this feedback network is a lead lag network which consists of one series RC combination and one parallel RC combination. So the circuit diagram of the Wenbridge oscillator will consist of the two stage C amplifier followed by a feedback circuit. The feedback circuit as I told you it is a lead lag network. Now this circuit is being called as a lead lag network because it will lead for certain input frequencies and it will lag for certain input frequencies. That is, this circuit will provide some positive phase shift for certain input frequencies and it will provide a negative phase shift for other frequencies. There will be only one frequency signal for which this lead lag network will provide a zero degree phase shift. The output of the amplifier is being connected to the feedback circuit and the output of the feedback circuit is coupled back to the input of the amplifier. 
Now this circuit consists of various components such as the components or resistances RB, resistances RC, emitter resistances RE. So all these resistances are used to fix the bias of the transistor. The coupling capacitors are also used in this circuit and the purpose of this coupling capacitor is to couple the AC signal and it will block the DC voltages. Now let us understand the working of the Wenbridge oscillator. Now we know that in case of any oscillator, we require some starting voltage. Oscillator do not have any AC input and therefore the initial starting voltage is to be provided by the noise signal that is being present at the input of the oscillator. The two stage amplifier will provide a total phase shift of 360 degrees to this input signal because one stage of C amplifier will provide a phase shift of 180 degrees. Another stage will provide another phase shift of 180 degrees and therefore there will be a total phase shift of 360 degrees for the input signal. Now there is a lead lag network. The output of the amplifier is coupled to the lead lag network and lead lag network is such a network which will provide either a positive phase shift or a negative phase shift to the input signal. But this circuit will provide a zero degree phase shift to only one frequency. And for that frequency, you will find that the condition of positive feedback is satisfied. Now when the Barkhausen condition, that is the product of A beta is equal to one is satisfied, then you will find that the sustained oscillations can be obtained at the output of the amplifier. So here at the output of the two stage amplifier, we can get the sustained oscillations, which are sinusoidal oscillations. Now the frequency of oscillation will not depend upon the C amplifier, but the frequency of oscillation will depend upon the resistance capacitor network used in the feedback circuit. That is the value of resistance R and capacitor C used in the lead lag network will decide the frequency of oscillations. Now we can analyze the Wenbridge oscillator circuit in order to obtain the expression for frequency of oscillations and condition for oscillations. So for this purpose, I will again consider only the lead lag network. Suppose R1, C1 is the series combination and R2, C2 is the parallel combination. It is possible that you can take R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R and C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C. Suppose VI is the input voltage and VO is the output voltage. And suppose Z1 is the impedance of series combination and Z2 is the impedance of parallel combination. Now the lead light network, suppose its input is VI and the output is VO. Now we know that uh, the reactance of the capacitor can be given as XC1 is equal to one upon omega C1 and XC2 is equal to one upon omega C2. Now we can write the equations for the impedances Z1 and Z2. The impedance Z1 can be written as R1 minus JXC1 and Z2 can be written as one upon R2 plus one upon minus JXC2 raised to minus one. So this can be written as R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2 that is minus J R2 into XC2 divided by R2 minus JXC2. Now we can obtain the expression for the feedback ratio. The feedback ratio is defined as beta, which is equal to output divided by input, VO divided by VI, which is just nothing but the output impedance Z2 divided by total impedance Z1 plus Z2. So when you substitute the value of Z2 and Z1 in this expression, then we can rewrite the equation for beta as minus JR2 XC2 divided by R2 minus JXC2 divided by R1 minus JXC1 plus minus j r2 xc2 divided by r2 minus j xc2. Now in the numerator we have r2 minus j xc2 so we can multiply numerator and denominator by this term and therefore we can rewrite the equation for beta as beta is equal to minus j r2 xc2 divided by r1 minus j xc1 in the bracket r2 minus j xc2 minus j r2 xc2. Therefore, we can rewrite this uh, feedback factor beta as just nothing but R2 XC2 divided by R1 XC2 plus R2 XC1 plus R2 XC2 plus J in the bracket R1 R2 
minus x1 into x2. Now we know that we want the loop gain to be real and whenever we want the loop gain to be real then the imaginary part in the expression for beta must be equal to zero. And therefore we will equate this imaginary part equal to zero as r1 r2 minus x1 into x2 is equal to zero. And therefore we can rewrite this term as r1 into r2 is equal to 1 upon omega c1 into 1 upon omega c2. Now from this expression we can get the expression for frequency of oscillation as omega is equal to 1 upon under root r1 r2 into c1 c2. Now we can suppose that the values of r1 and r2 are same equal to r. Similarly the values of c1 and c2 are same equal to c and therefore we can get the expression for frequency of oscillation omega is equal to 1 upon rc and therefore we can rewrite the same equation as f is equal to 1 upon 2 pi rc. So this is the expression for the frequency of oscillation of end bridge oscillator. One can easily observe that the frequency of oscillation will depend upon the values of resistance r and capacitor c used in the lead lag network of the end bridge oscillator. Now we can obtain the expression for condition of oscillation. Now if I equate r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c and if we equate the imaginary term equal to zero then we can rewrite the expression for the feedback factor or feedback ratio beta is equal to rxc divided by 3 rxc so which is just nothing but 1 upon 3. That is the gain of the amplifier must be equal to 3 in order to produce the sustained oscillations. So this is the condition for the oscillation. So if you want to build the sustained oscillations for the Weinbridge oscillator, then the gain of the amplifier must be equal to or greater than 3 in order to produce the sustained oscillations. Thank you friends for viewing the session. Hopefully you have understood the circuit diagram working and analysis of the Weinbridge oscillator. Thank you all for viewing the session.